everyone welcome to today's show and if you're joining for the first time this is part of our industry series for which we meet uh, every tuesday at 5 30 p.m uh, eastern and we always have um, a, an exciting plan and we are always reviewing uh, one of the vendors or the solution for today we have a solution called app team process pro so we are going to have a lot of fun discussing that. Before we do that, we are going to start with everybody's intros. I am going to start with my intro. If you don't know me, your host and principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. On that note, I am going to move to Dave for his intro. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Hey, everybody. My name is Dave Chrysler, and I own an operations consulting business, working with leaders in manufacturing and distribution, helping them to systemize their business, uh, optimize processes. And I come to you with more than uh, 20 years of uh, operational leadership roles, uh, which included implementing a couple of ERP systems. So excited to be here with everybody. Thanks for having me, Sam. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Dave. Andy, can I ask you to introduce yourself next? Thank you, Sam. Thanks for inviting me. My name is Andy Pratico. I've been in the ERP business for manufacturers all my life. I've worked all over North America. I've uh, got a lot of experience with most systems out there. Um, and uh, I also have a published book on how to uncover the truth about ERP software before you buy. And hopefully it's uh, helpful for some folks. Thank you very much, Sam. And I'm looking forward to the presentation today. Thank you so much for being here, Andy. And if you're in the audience and joining for the first time, make sure you guys post your questions and comments. We typically try to cover them during the show. If you run out of time, we'll make sure that you receive your answers. On that note, guys, uh, we are probably doing three FTN in uh, in a row, I guess. Uh, last two were FTN as well. So a lot of FTN going on in the series. Um, so today, uh, you know, obviously this is Process Pro. So first I am going to start with the brief overview of the corporate strategy of FTN. And then we are going to compare this particular solution with some of the other products that we have reviewed. So I think we have been discussing that FTN the way they started, the strategy is very similar to uh, the purpose-built solution. Namely, it's going to be your N4, Epicor, ECI overall from the corporate strategy perspective. And then uh, they, they are going to have a lot of different solutions in their portfolio. And that's why we have to review a lot of them. Now, one of the biggest confusion, even within the ERP community, the people who are consulting on a daily basis, they are always going to be confused about Okay, why do you have three solutions for process manufacturing? Okay, so today we are talking about process manufacturing, and this is going to be the process pro solution. Okay, uh, last week, I, if I remember correctly, Andy, Dave, uh, please correct me if I'm off here. I believe we reviewed ROS. ROS is also a process manufacturing solution. Before that, we had Exenta, and that is the your apparel sort of, the, Exenta does not do retail. Uh, it's really very apparel manufacturing solution. So here we are talking about the process manufacturing as well. So we will talk about the differences between Process Pro as well as ROS. And I don't know if I'm going to be close. Maybe Andy, you might know a little bit if you have come across them ever. <laughs> any background by any chance? Andy, yeah, you're on mute. Uh, with Process Pro? Oh, oh yeah. I, I, I run across it once in a while. Both um, of them, do you know the specific differences? In your opinion, how are they positioned? With Ross? Yeah. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Ross is usually targeted at larger companies, whereas Process Pro is usually in, uh, a bolt-on to an existing accounting system like QuickBooks or Sage 50 or one of those types of systems. 
that's very interesting observation and we'll review and we'll bet that using the commentary that we have in the reviews and i am not sure if i'm going to be close to be honest in terms of their positioning based on our research and uh, where we have come across them in our deals uh, to be honest uh, but i really don't think it is going to be a size to be honest uh, andy and uh, process pro if you look at their marketing material i think they as per at least their pr they have claimed that you know it was one of the most comprehensive uh, process manufacturing solution in general and this is the sql server based they have their own accounting so obviously it's a full fledged solution uh, i don't know andy if you are getting confused a little bit because there are other uh, products in their portfolio such as uh, bc food uh, bc food was the add on on top of your business central so aptian does have some of the add ons that said on top of other erp system but process pro ross as well as your exenta they are fully featured uh, you know purpose built erp system so i'll tell you in my mind uh, you know where these two sort of hang out so the way we have reviewed ross ross was more of the food manufacturing solution the way their screens were the way their fields were and again in the process manufacturing space there are a lot of different layers okay so some solutions are going to be slightly better fit for the food manufacturing the other ones are going to be slightly better fit for the real process process and where we are talking about the process process this is going to be probably chemical manufacturing okay is the classic example okay so in my mind and the uh, the closest comparison for process pro is going to be batchmaster and i don't know if you are familiar with batchmaster batchmaster yeah. was the go to solution in maybe, the- maybe batchmaster was the one i was thinking of that integrates to uh, quickbooks and sage 50 that uh, would be the right that's assessment probably, that's probably where i got it wrong yeah okay that would be the right assessment so batchmaster the way the company was structured they were the most prominent in the sap business one space i would say i think they did a lot of business on top of sage because in general most sage solutions were very accounting focused uh, in general the way the sage solutions are built so batchmaster did a lot of business on top of your sap sage uh, you know some other ones in the main market but for the most part those were their go to market verticals they have also developed their uh, process manufacturing solution and the quality solution on top of acamatica very similar strategy uh, you know but very new solution <laughs> from the technology perspective okay initially they were more of the boltons uh, using their ui uh, and they were sort of plugging in with every single uh, erp system out there but now with acamatica they have taken slightly different approach that the solution is very na- natively built inside acamatica so that's the story of uh, batchmaster but here process pro is going to be very comparable but process pro is the fully featured erp system for the same process verticals that batch master card targets that's my understanding of the solution again we'll review and maybe and you are going to have some more commentary once we get through the slides once we observe okay what kind of customers uh, absolutely absolutely right? there's one there's one comment uh, that uh, i've been told by many of your customers for process pro is um and whether or not this is true or just rumors you know you never know but they've told me that since aptin has taken them over there hasn't been much for upgrades that's the strategy that aptin likes to pursue in general okay that's their go to market strategy they are going to buy these legacy solutions they are going to change the marketing that is number one okay if you look at the marketing material they are probably going to be better than acamatica net suite okay it's all going to be yellow because very swedish color i guess Uh, <laughs> you know it's always going to be and that's the vista equity mindset any of their portfolio companies are always going to be yellow and for, i don't know if that is the ikea you know mindset as well ikea is very yellow in color um so uh, you know uh it's very consistent if you actually observe all the companies in the vista equity portfolio and aptin before they were about to go bankrupt we all know this and then vista equity bought it and then they changed the go to market strategy so now Uh, obviously they are doing far better in general overall from the company perspective so vista equity financially they did wonders with the company their go to market strategy worked there's no question about that 
okay but their go to market strategy was always hey i am going to buy these legacy solutions i am not going to invest in the rnd okay there is no point in invest in the rnd because the way sales deals are done everybody cares for the demo as long as you are showing them pretty screens yeah. <laughs> and pretty powerpoints right. nobody yeah. really knows what's underneath as long as the screens are pretty, common, yeah, the majority don't look under the covers. You're right. Exactly. Exactly. So that is the strategy. And finance people, the salespeople, they are really, really smart in that. Okay. They really know how to invest their money. So obviously, all of these companies that are very purpose built, they were all started by finance people and they started sort of reorganizing their dollars in terms of where to spend. So you are absolutely right. When Aptine acquires, they do not re architect their system. Okay, some of the systems are probably going to have COBOL underneath. Uh, and that's the reality of a lot of systems in the market. They might have fancy cloud native UI, and you as a buyer are never going to know unless you program. <laughs> so they so they have put some money into the GUI, into the front end? So there are typically three layers, Andy, right? So you have yeah. the front end, you have the service layer, you have the back end, okay? Back end. Typically, yeah. database is the hardest to change in general. Right. Okay, once you... Database is like almost like shaking the foundation of your house. You might as well, you might as well write a new system. Yeah, exactly. It's very, very, very hard to change that. And that's why the foundational problem, if there are going to be with any of the ERP system from the database perspective, they are very, very, very hard to change. And that's why you will see a lot of issues, even though the systems that are trying to claim themselves as cloud native, they cannot have the same capabilities. For example, let's say if you talk about the double tabbing, uh, you know, of the systems, okay? Some systems, they are going to claim that they are cloud native, but you cannot open two tabs, okay? Because it was never sort of architected as uh, the cloud native. Universal search, first thing that you are going to notice. Universal search is, you know, if I were polite, then it's pure trash. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's that bad. Uh, <laughs> um, so, it's not going to work because it was the database is not designed for the modern experience. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know? So, again. You know, Sam, this whole concept about front end service and the back end, and, and you know how you do your top 10 in different, top 10 ERPs and different targets? It might be good to put together a, a, a comparison list like that on the ones that have. Uh, you know, redone their front end, but still have the old back end and, you know, pros and cons from that. Yeah. Yeah. And there is only so much you can do with these lists, I guess, you know, uh, unless you have very complicated grid, the chemistry grid, I guess, uh, you know, that is going to have 256 different layers uh, that you need to analyze. And by that time you put that as the marketing material, people get confused. That it would be nice <laughs> to make it simple so that the average person would understand that concept. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's why we are trying to commercialize the idea of fake cloud, Andy. Okay? I don't know whether fake you heard cloud. this. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but the problem is that no one knows what you mean when you say fake cloud. They go, okay. Uh, exactly. That's why you need we to have hire to experts to do the selection. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, again, you know, when you look at the, the whole experience of fake cloud, Aptian, obviously, they are not investing anything in technology, which means they are not changing. They are not even changing the UI. Uh, you know, oh, some companies really? are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some companies, what they have done is, for example, let's say if you look at companies like UAD, uh, you know, the underlying layer is still going to be very cobolish, uh, or the RPG, or you know, again, I wasn't born in those days, so Andy, you are probably far more informed. <laughs> well, me, me, and Rip Van Winkle, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, so those companies, what they have done is they have created this UI layer, which is very cloud native. Uh, you know, at least they have replaced that. Obviously, there are technology limitations in terms of what you can do, even in the front end layer. If your database is going to be really legacy, it's very, very, very hard to replicate that experience. So that's why you have all of these challenges in these systems when you look at the cloud native experience. But the only thing they have done is they have simply changed the front end, the service layer. And sometimes you can probably do the connection using your mainframe terminal as well. It's that bad. Okay, so they are doing data translation and they are trying to pretend that they have a real uh, you know, relational database, but they typically don't. Well, well let me ask a you a question and it might be more of a generic question, Sam, as opposed to specific with Aptine. 
But when you have these companies that are buying these ERPs, older, older legacy type systems, and basically milking the maintenance because they're not reinvesting in R&D, how long before the product uh, loyalty starts to erode so that they have to start putting R&D into it? I don't think that's the strategy that Aptine takes. The way that's no. my understanding, at least, of their corporate strategy, because the only company that is acquiring in 2023 is Aptine. Right. And why are they acquiring? Okay. If you really think about it, okay, private equity, the way private equity works and thinks, they take five years roadmap. They right. want to milk the company within five years. Okay. If you look at the legacy technology, five years is very, very, very short time. Yeah. Okay. The it's going to take five years before loyalty starts eroding. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so we'll, are, wait, we'll let that to the next problem, next owner's problem. E exactly. So ah. not I I would I'm not sure if they are going to let's say kill those products afterwards or what they are going to do, but their approach is that okay, I'm going to keep my support, I'm going to keep my services uh, inside app team. I'm not gonna worry about this whole channel because then I need to do a lot more documentation. Okay, I need to I need to put a lot of work, and then everybody's gonna know what's underneath. So if I keep everything within these four walls, then who's gonna know? I mean, I'll be supporting, you know. <laughs> so that's the mindset in general, which is very interesting. I mean, from the customer's perspective, because customers also don't know, you know, what's underneath. They are only going to know when they start customizing these systems, and they are going to run into those issues. If you look right. at the other systems, which are going to have the database layer as well as your service layer, and that is going to be exposed to the customers, they kind of know what they have underneath. Okay, so if it is and not every system is exposing that, especially the ones that are super legacy. <laughs> the only thing they have changed is the front end. Then, then you know we have a real problem with those systems, um, and that's why you know you will see those in reviews because at, at the end of the day, people have started this using for like four or five years, and then all of a sudden, they are going to get this, uh, you know, RPG patch, Cobol patch. Then customers know that, you know, uh, there's something going on. Cispro, it's very common. Cispro, I think the only thing they have done so far uh, is probably their UI. So Cispro still has very much so. the Cispro, RPG. But they've done a really good job with their UI. <laughs> uh, the back end really is smart. still the same. But you know, you know what we call that type of ERP in the industry? Lipstick on a farm animal. Exactly, exactly. And that farm <laughs> animal is so beautiful, Andy. <laughs> I know. I, I could have said something else, but I thought I'd just be a little more PC. You know me. I'm always PC. I know. I know you. I know you, Andy. Um, okay. Uh, any other comments before we move on to no. the slides? That's no? Great. Okay. Thanks, great conversation, by the way. Okay. Um, so here we have some commentary coming from FTN. Um so this is coming from uh, November 2020, and uh, this is the news. So 2020 is when they have announced that they were going to acquire uh, this company. So here they are saying announce the acquisition of Open Systems uh, Adoptable Solutions. So they used to be called OSAS, uh, and uh, they are saying headquartered in Minnesota. So obviously they were US based, which is very interesting because for the most part, what FTN was targeting, they were targeting primarily the Eastern Europe market a lot, uh, especially in 2023. So this was uh, the US acquisition. Lately, they have not targeted this market, but in this particular case, they had targeted the North American market. So here they are saying OSAS serves nearly 2,500 manufacturing distribution and services customers across North America and has built a strong reputation for its industry leading ERP solutions. Now, uh, Andy, when you get into the, I, I think I mentioned this last time as well, when you get into the nuances of process manufacturing, there are a lot of different layers, okay? And there are industries where a lot of solutions cannot work because the process manufacturing is very nuanced, the way it works. You are not going to have, even if you have, let's say, the process manufacturing solution, on top of that, you have to build a lot of customization to make it usable for your industry. For example, let's say if you compare this with Sage X3, Okay, Sage X3 is a quote unquote you know, process manufacturing solution, but that also requires a ton of add ons uh, as well as customization for these process verticals. In general, the process verticals is that are right. Very, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah, they are very complex, very, very oh. complex. 
each industry could be extremely complex. They have manufacturing, they have distribution, they have logistics, they have quality, they have compliance, the, PM, the PLMs that you have, each patch has very different PLM in general, the way their project management, the way their NPD process, supply chain, everything is just so different. Very, very, very different. Um, so here they are talking about, so here they are listing the industries as food and beverage, specialty chemicals, manufacturing, personal care, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. The deals that we have come across, Process Pro, uh, they were mainly into the chemical sort of manufacturing, uh, you know, and they are going to be chemically related manufacturing is what we have come across. And ND in terms of size, um, I think we have seen a lot of companies that were in that 100 to 500 million dollar range and is they were doing okay. Yeah, they were outgrowing and that's why they came to us, to be honest. Wow. Um, so this is a decent size solution. This is not a small solution. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here, over the past three years, OSAS has built on its impressive track record uh, with the release of its global solutions. And this is where they were saying that whatever we have, nobody else has in the market with the kind of depth they have in the solution. That is probably right as well, because the depth that you need in this industry, it's mind blowing the amount of functionality that you need and that these solutions can capture. I mean, none of the horizontal solutions can match their depth. And that's why you know companies really like to go for these. Uh, but when you are going to hit that $500 million mark, you are probably looking for the best of breed architecture because it's very hard to bring those 5,000 people on one table, to be honest. So it could be hard to sort of you know sell a package solution in those verticals. But you know it's very interesting that they can provide so much functionality uh, as part of the same solution. Uh, here they are saying OSAS will be able to extend Aptine's complementary offerings to its customers and leverage Aptine's global scale to accelerate its growth. So basically, what Aptine was looking for from this acquisition is number one, they were uh, they would take the solution globally in the market. That's number one, uh, and number two, obviously they have a lot of follow-on offerings that they like to sell. So their goal would be to sell WMS, TMS, PLM integrate all of that, you know, don't invest in the R&D, but integrate. Uh, Pre-baked integration is where they specialize. Uh, that's what they are trying to do. So rather than changing the database, they are going to uh, integrate and, and sell as bundled solution, but they can also sell as the individual solutions. Uh, any comments, guys? No, no, it's all very interesting. Okay. So here is the comparison, and this is where it gets really interesting overall when you start comparing solutions such as ROS and uh, Process Pro. And I don't think a lot of people really understand the difference, uh, but this is coming from one of the affiliate sites, and they have done a decent job, I would say, at least comparing the features. So here, Aptine ROS, they are saying it has food manufacturing, it has recall management, and it has ERP. Uh, not everything is visible here. But if you look at ERP features, they are fairly comparable, okay? So the interesting part here is you have the accounting integration, accounting management, CRM, dashboard, and that's common in both of them. You have the distribution management. Uh, the only thing that is missing from Process Pro, which is interesting in my mind, uh, they don't have enterprise asset management, okay? Uh, they both have financial management. The Process Pro has HR management, but Ross does not have HR management, right? So uh, my theory based on why uh, it is so, and I don't know if there is something wrong with the site itself, uh, but I'll tell you my understanding of this and maybe you guys can tell me if you guys have uh, any sort of insights there. Typically the enterprise asset management you are going to see in a lot of food and beverage verticals uh, you know, that's where you have a lot more need in general of the enterprise asset management. So that's why we are seeing the enterprise asset management in the app and Ross. And I didn't even know what I was talking about before and, I looked at just, it. Am I just, to, <laughs> uh, just to clear, obviously, when you say enterprise asset management, it can mean a lot of things. But under that umbrella, preventive maintenance would be in that, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So two things. Number one, I think the way when people use enterprise asset management versus sort of the fixed assets. Uh, those two terms are used together in general. Fixed asset term is used more from the finance, accounting. accounting exactly, exactly. The enterprise asset management is going to be more from the 
production side of the house this is what my shop floor operators are going to care for when they have the enterprise health and safety preventive maintenance uh, you know doing scheduling around maintenance obviously that's going to be critical as well now i would think that even in verticals such as your chemicals probably enterprise asset management is going to be key but they don't have it there because maybe because they don't have as expensive assets that could be the reason why they don't have that um, or they rely on the third party bolt on like you were describing earlier exactly and typically they the way these companies try to acquire buy build functionality is going to be whatever is going to be most critical for the functionality they will try to house that inside the solution and that will give you a little intel in terms of where this particular solution is positioned so now le let's compare this with the uh, you know some of the other solutions that we have reviewed in the recent past in the similar industries for example let's say qad okay uh, qad and probably iqms as well okay that is probably going to be comparable to process pro because iqms does really well in the plastics uh, space they do really well in a little bit of automotive everybody sort of positioned in automotive but then they have their own flavors as well what is automotive for everybody some people are so, some solutions are sort of positioned for the suppliers some are positioned for plastic suppliers some are positioned for oems because those are very different business models in general okay so i don't know i mean one of the hints that you might get from this is whether qwd has enterprise asset management my theory is going to be probably they don't they are not going to be as strong um, in general <laughs> so and probably iqms as well i don't know how strong they are going to be so that could be your sort of way of looking at okay when you are comparing the solutions of process pro is going to be comp compared with these solutions that are positioned in chemicals plastics uh, that's where it is probably going to do really well now you know it, these both these products offer a, a, labor, a labor, pardon me a laboratory module lab module uh, and i'm not even going to try that word because if andy is struggling i don't know what is going to happen to me <laughs> <laughs> um it was laborious uh laborious i mean lab, let's just call it labs man it just yeah, easy. i don't know why easier. you have to make it yeah. so complex i know uh, <laughs> let's just call it labs okay so labs easy peasy um i don't know if no you know what i think process pro will position themselves in the labs space as well okay um, they are sure definitely ross? ross is definitely not there i i guarantee this well with uh, the quality it, it's underlying quality management on process pro and that's usually overlaps with lab testing and such like that quality management huh. is going to be relevant in every single space i would say i don't know why aptin ross does not have quality here uh, even in the food space in the lab space so I think you were referring to this one, right? Process Pro or Ross? This is Ross. This is Process uh, Pro ND. Yeah, both of them are right there. Yeah, these are the two I was talking about. Yeah. So Ross does not seem to be, I don't know how much quality they have because at least this site did not right. mention that they have quality. So uh, I think the labs, the pharma, the cannabis, uh, all of that is going to be bundled under Process Pro. This is more of the food manufacturing solution, which is not as much into your process manufacturing as well as Again, depending upon the depth of the process manufacturing, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, do you guys have any other comments or shall I move on? No? No. Okay, so here, one more uh, announcement coming from Process Pro. So this is coming from 2017. And here they are saying Process Pro announces new ERP software solution. So this is where they had launched their global capabilities. Uh, process Pro Global, the next generation of batch process manufacturing software. So they are defining themselves as batch manu uh, manufacturing software. Now, batch is a very interesting term, Andy. I don't know whether you would use batch for food manufacturing or not. Uh, batch is typically used. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Andy. I was going to say, you know, most process manufacturers are batch manufacturers. You've got continuous flow, which is certainly completely different, but those are two types, you know, generally speaking, continuous flow, batch process. So none of these are actually positioned for continuous flow. I mean, no, I definitely. don't know any ERP system that can work in continuous flow. Uh, man, I, I think I made completely that comment before as well. Completely different requirements. 
Um, and they typically have, I mean, the only ERP solutions that I've seen there, to be honest, is going to be Microsoft. Uh, Sage probably is very common in those. Yeah, uh, Microsoft, as well. no. Uh, IFS is probably going to be very common IFS, there too. Yes. Uh, you know, and the only reason why they are there is because of the financials as well as the asset management. And that's why if you look at the market positioning of IFS, the way they like to position, they don't even call themselves sort of an ERP, to be honest, because, you know, I don't know uh, if they are really an ERP, ERP, right? So they have three different legs of their solution. One is going to be your finance and accounting. Then you have the asset management and then field service. So those three. Now, obviously, these three are equally relevant for the ERP solution. No questions there, but the way uh, oil and gas and the continuous flow is going to use these solutions for operations, they are going to have completely different, you know, software. And when you are doing some ad hoc sort of accounting, because you cannot do the real accounting because, you know, the process is so complex in general, right? So they somehow need to segment, okay, where the process ends because you don't sort of have the project job to define, okay, what's your costing? <laughs> So it becomes very difficult there. So I know that some of the ERP systems are there in the market, and I don't know if they are more of the operational system, but they are positioned for continuous flow. So this is not continuous flow at all. Okay, This is all for the process manufacturing where you are going to have some sort of job or some sort of, uh, you know, that you are releasing and fixed. Uh, you know, you have the start and finish. Order. Exactly. You have a start and finish, I guess. That's how I would define it. It's sure. not Continuous it, might, it might be a daily production, but you're right, start and finish. Uh, right, but even in this case, when you they have the daily production, they still have the number and the orders that they are releasing. Uh, yeah. May not be in chemical, I guess. Chemical may be different, so you may be right, I guess. Um, chemical is definitely different. Uh, well, it depends. Chemical is like in a kind of a hybrid. It can be batch. It can be continuous process. You are right. You are right. You are absolutely right there. Uh, and that could be applicable for pharma as well. So you are right. Um, so I don't know how much capabilities these guys have, but I mean, that's where it gets really interesting overall uh, when you look at the chemical space. Um, here they are saying uh, the power and backing of Microsoft. Um, so they are saying uh, Process Pro Global is built from the ground up on leading edge Microsoft technology. They were leading edge in 1980s, not anymore, guys. Uh, <laughs> is this um, so with a client server type system? I mean, 90% of the ERP systems are probably built on Microsoft.NET SQL Server. Right. Uh, you know, and that's probably the reason why it is so hard for them to build this cloud native architecture in general. Uh, you know, because the way Microsoft technologies work traditionally, they were very Windows centric. Um, okay. okay. They were never sort of. Uh, if you look at the other ecosystem, they were slightly more service-oriented architecture. For them, it was just easier to migrate to cloud-native architecture. So, cloud, for so the cloud offering with these guys is probably going to be single-tenant. That's okay. So, again, that's debatable. I, I would not say single-tenant. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, again, there are so many different layers in cloud in terms of how you look at it, right? Oh, I know. So, when you look at the single-tenant, that is the deployment perspective. You have the user experience perspective, you have the deployment, you have the financial, you have the operations. There are so many different layers of looking at cloud. Uh, you know, everybody has sort of found the shortcut, especially the legacy vendors. Uh, and they are only trying to focus on things that customers care for and customers understand. The other thing they are never going to understand. <laughs> Um, so in this particular case, they have the .NET SOA as well as the SQL Server design for adaptability to meet the unique requirements of clients' specific business while staying current uh, with the latest standard release. So here they are saying the breadth of the global ERP application set is uh, more comprehensive than any other ERP system uh, in the market. Manufacturing inventory, uh, quality, financials, and sales are supplemented with warehouse management compliance point of sale can you believe this guys okay so they have the retail perspective which is your point of sale so they have physical stores that they are trying to then they have logistics then they have e-commerce uh, distribution quality compliance so <laughs> the depth and breadth of functionality that you need in this industry it's mind-blowing okay direct store delivery maintenance and repair can you believe this <laughs> field service fixed assets project accounting guys <laughs> payroll 
human resources and much more the critical business needs of process manufacturers are inherently built into the global software solution again it's pretty much everything i don't know anything that is probably left here uh you know the whole gamut yeah, of the devil's always software. in the details but there's no question they're nailing all the different functionality you can look you're looking for typically the smaller the system the more functionality you are going to find okay <laughs> that's given in general uh so functionally if you are going to be comparing it's not a real comparison okay you just don't know what you are buying it's as simple as that um you need to get into technology <laughs> to be able to understand these things um okay so here they are saying you know some of the key functionality here so they have easily develop and maintain formulas and recipes including revisions and versions so i think we have seen the revisions term uh, in a lot of different discrete verticals but here they have versions as well um and i don't know i mean dave and if you guys have any sort of insight there in terms of how they correlate but uh, they have both and both are going to be equally relevant um yeah i mean in general their program management process very involved uh, the way it works and that's why they have to have multiple layers um so i don't know if the version is going to be more that is related to outside world uh, versus i don't know i don't know how they overlap um be interesting to dive into that functionality though sam to find out if that flows all the way through uh inventory management and you know any potential uh recall or or any other you know from a quality standpoint how deep that functionality goes uh to be able to understand um you know what what formula revision and version uh you know created a particular batch to then flow through the rest of the uh system honestly speaking i mean it's all over the place across the processes and that's why it is so difficult it's not going to be just okay i'm calling something version in my engineering and production does not need to care about that i don't think it works that way uh you know i think it does go to production because the up and we will look at the screens the screens are actually going to have the versions as well uh, otherwise you can probably use your you know discrete manufacturing solution and that's why this becomes really interesting because you have to track that throughout the process and recall is a great example a great point uh, dave there uh the other uh you know terminology that we are seeing here is production private label co contract manufacturing these three are very different business models and they can accommodate all three can you believe this again operational complexity <laughs> in terms of the business model it's just mind blowing in this space uh then you have the r and d in r and d we have some commentary here uh so we are talking about interfering current production runs i uh leverage existing cost history while seemingly adding new items for r and d um that's very interesting as well the way their program management and the r and d processes work they are r and ding a lot uh because this is almost very similar to fashion to be honest because some of these verticals for example let's say if you talk about food they always have to come up with new products new taste new recipes new formulas uh, so in general the npd process is very involved and they dictate a lot of processes in terms of uh, what solution they are going to be using um, so it gets really interesting when you are talking to r&d typically with the erp processes r&d is not going to be involved as much but in fashion uh, they are definitely going to be involved in these verticals they are definitely going to be involved Uh, Sam, you mentioned that QAD is going to be targeting a similar target market as the Process Pro, and you mentioned Process Pro between 100 million and 500 million in size companies. So, you, or, do you think that's the same same target size for QAD? Uh, I would think QAD is slightly bigger. Uh, QAD is slightly bigger. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they I always. I would think that too. I would yeah. think that too. yeah they were always targeting global markets they were always localized in at least 30 countries that's my understanding so we have already reviewed the uh, the pr for these guys and they globalized in last 2 3 years so how much localization are they going to have most likely they must have developed for europe because obviously aptin is trying to go there because aptin is already present there so now they are trying to sell in that market but for the most part this is not meant to be a global solution this must be more of the north american solution 
the way Bashmaster was, the way Akimatica is, uh, you know, yeah, these are not necessarily global solutions. But QAD, you know, they were always global uh, in general. So that's a real difference. Um, here we have the lot traceability. Lot traceability gets very interesting as well. So they are talking about audit and recall needs with full forward and backward lot numbers. Uh, forward and backward lot number uh, genealogy is another term that is very unique. Uh, and that gets very interesting in general in this space. Uh, on all raw materials, work in uh, progress uh, and finished good from PO receipt through final sale. And my understanding of genealogy is going to be the process is going to be very similar to Ross, the way we saw the whole recallability thing, but it might be slightly more involved in terms of the layers that you are going to have, uh, you know, of your traceability. I think that's where I would think. Uh, and those layers are going to be extremely important even in the field service space when you are targeting uh, automotive. And that's probably the reason why there is always overlap between your automotive, food and bath, chemicals, uh, you know, for some reason, these solutions are always targeting discrete as well as process <laughs> rather than targeting all discrete, all process. Right. So, do it. Yeah. Stay in your lane. Do what you do best. No, but I mean, the way their items and products are designed, there is some very interesting overlap that automotive seem to work. And the reason, the other reason is because for automotive, you need to develop the compliance, but you have these plastic manufacturers that are trying to sell to automotive. So and they need the quality long run repetitive <laughs> type manufacturing. That's where the overlap comes because see, initially, yeah. if you look at Plex, they all started in automotive. They started selling to automotive discrete manufacturers, but then they had to sell to plastic because some people are going to be vertically in integrated. So your solution is not going to work. So now you have to develop your process manufacturing capability, sell to plastic. So now you are <laughs> selling to plastic all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> It's very interesting the way go-to-market strategy works uh, for ERP solutions. So here we have the quality control and compliance, complete in-process and customer-specific uh, testing at any point of uh, production, seamlessly generate certificates of analysis is very common uh, in oil and gas, in chemical industries, because when you are going to work with these large OEMs, they require certificate of analysis as part of your uh, Shipment, if you don't have that, they cannot accept. Uh, so that is actually part of your recallability. I think that is going to be common in the automotive, oil and gas, chemicals. So these are some of the spaces where you definitely need uh, those processes. Uh, here, uh, accounting for production limitations and lead time. Uh, interesting. Production floor by work order or batch ticket accounting for... Uh, uh, the uh, organics as well as the allergens, I, I guess those uh, two are going to be very common in the uh, pharma space, in the uh, the cannabis space. Um, so yeah, so that's very interesting as well. Um, MRO is very common. And again, that's sort of uh, a little overlap with IFS. Then you have the specific testing and generation of, uh, you know, COFA uh, for individual customers to meet the compliance requirements, uh, feature support, supply chain control. And then you have the nutritional nutritional labeling, uh, quality management, and the SDS authoring. Those are going to be significantly complex overall in this space as well. And that's where you need very comprehensive quality management solution. And they were really uh, strong at that. And then obviously, uh, you have the FDA compliance, so they can support that as well. Um, Comments, guys, or are we good? That's good. Okay, perfect. So uh, some more commentary here. Uh, DSC, that's very interesting. Never saw that before, I guess. So that's why I highlighted that. Uh, extend the functionality of the POS system with on-the-road accessibility. Okay, so the only place where you are going to find this, DSC functionality, okay? In your DCOM, DCOM is also designed for process manufacturing. And they, the whole root accounting is very different, the way it works, okay? If you don't have root accounting for these businesses, your accounting is not going to work. Can you believe this? <laughs> okay, so they have this functionality. So DST is very common. I can almost guarantee that maybe Auto uh, is probably going to have layers of that because they target restaurant. They target very similar verticals as well. 
Um, so here on the road accessibility, allowing you to go mobile with your order entry invoicing and payment transactions. Um, again, very complex in general. Um, and a lot of chemical companies, they have to have their in-house fleet because some of those chemicals, you are not going to find a 3PL. <laughs> that, that, that can carry your liquid. So you have to figure your own thing out. Uh, you see this problem in the frozen food manufacturing space as well. Uh, you know, they cannot, or even if they find 3PL, they don't have profit margin to be able to support. So they have to build their own fleet. And that increases the operational complexity. And that's why they have that. Uh, um, comments? No? Well, it's interesting on the one where it says B2B e-commerce offers web portal access to customers for self-service sales without the need for a third-party e-commerce solution. Now, it depends what they mean there, of course, because they're still going to need a van, right? B2B e-commerce could be a portal. <laughs> exposed sure, to your... not e-commerce. <laughs> not B2B e-commerce. be a portal, right. That's probably what they're talking about. <laughs> That's yeah. not B2B e-commerce. Okay, right. and B2B commerce could also be SAP Hybris, uh, which right. is probably a billion dollar solution. Uh, <laughs> um, so again, don't go by the bullet points of the, the yeah, specs. I mean, they don't mean a lot. So often you see ERP companies calling uh, an e-commerce solution an EDI, which is not. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys don't have any other comments, so here is these screens, and we always like to look at the product. So here, very similar look as your Microsoft products. Uh, if you compare this with Microsoft GP, you are probably going to get similar look and feel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because this is what is Microsoft architecture. This is what Microsoft is mandating. So every single application that is built on Microsoft stack is probably going to look similar, but they all struggle in going to cloud because that is very expensive in general. The whole development is very expensive because in the older days when you were on-prem, you could utilize your own laptop for testing. Now you have to pay for your server capacity, even to develop, even to test. <laughs> so that increases the cost for everybody. And that's what is the challenge. And that's why we had so many legacy solutions in, in the on-prem world. And they're really struggling to migrate to cloud because cloud is expensive. Here, and again, I don't know how modern this is going to be. I think these screenshots, and by the way, one of the things that you are going to notice, okay, if you try to look up for any demos whatsoever about these solutions on YouTube, publicly, any screenshot, you are not going to find anything. Can you believe this, guys? No. Zero documentation. The only place where you can look at the product is going to be during a sales call. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So are these screens relatively current? Six screenshots all over the internet, guys. Unless you are under NDA and you are a customer, mm. you don't know what. That's how closed these ecosystems are. Can you believe this, guys? Mm. Uh, and it's a challenge for us. I mean, see, the people who are doing this based on the public information, because we just don't have enough information. <laughs> Unless the vendor is feeding you, and they can be selective about what they want you to look at. So it could get really tricky uh, in general. But you know these ecosystems are extremely closed. They are purposely not trying to release any information uh, so that customers just don't know what they are getting into. Uh, very, very, very closed ecosystem in general. Uh, so let's look at some of the reviews. And this is probably a misfit in my mind. So here, the customer is the sales manager. And uh, they are from Consumer Electronics, mid-market, 51 to 1,000 employees. Andy, can you believe this? So this is a fairly sizable organization. Okay, 2018. That's so fairly quite a good. range, 51 to 1,000. I agree, but let's look at the review and see if we can find, you know, whether they are going to be closer to 51 or probably 2,000. Okay, so here they are saying Process Pro was the first ERP that tool that used, and I had perfect experience with that software. Their customer service is just amazingly responsive and friendly. By the way, the customer service comment is probably for the Process Pro team. In general, when these private equity owned companies or the publicly traded companies are going to acquire any mom and pop solution, their service is going to change completely. Okay, <laughs> you cannot expect the same experience. Okay, these are more of the consulting organizations. That's why they are able to provide all of that. 
okay so this is completely changed i guarantee this okay so now they are saying the easiest application i saw to set up and use their price is also reasonable useful application we gen experience with any big problems except scrolling syncing and freezing errors no problems guys which are <laughs> small <scrolling>. mistakes <laughs> exactly what's a big deal guys it just freezes uh, a couple of the times the next one that i find really interesting though sam the next <laughs> the next sentence it was um, used for well, eight nine months in our company and after eight or nine months and then we had to replace it exactly because we need a software to use for larger projects and big data so obviously the uh you know person does not understand the production process and that's wow. why he's uh, using the term big data uh but i think where they really struggled and and that's why i was thinking that this is probably a wrong product they shouldn't have bought this consumer well, electronics <laughs> they used it for eight or nine months but that was enough for them to put a, 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 a this comment on the internet but they don't really have any experience at all use meaning they were in the implementation so basically it never went live that would be my understanding right. of it. <laughs> they probably found at the but before going live that it didn't yeah. handle the what they needed for projects yeah so therefore they moved on isn't that something eh? exactly and businesses are really smart i mean they do go through the implementation process but if they don't feel comfortable they don't go live because That's one right. thing you don't want to do you just don't want to yeah <laughs> you don't want to be at a place where you are going live and you are not confident on the software that's it you'll be done man uh, you have no idea how bad it gets yeah uh, yeah um okay here uh, they are talking about inventory uh, coordinator warehouse supervisor in the us so we don't really have the industry but here 51 to 200 employees food and bev this is probably okay uh, you know again food this is not designed for food and bev in my mind uh, this design more for process manufacturing so let's see but they are still going to be happy so here four years ago so this is very recent they are saying i like that it's built specifically for process manufacturing and that is right as well that it is really built for that uh, now there is a not a lot of customizing to be done since it's so ready out of the box which is true okay the way these solutions are designed you just don't have to customize but make sure you buy the whole box replace everything from your architecture don't try to re <laughs> rip and replace because it's not going to work <laughs> okay so uh, if you are willing to replace everything then probably these solutions are better don't selectively buy these solutions uh my only complaint is that the user interface isn't the best it could be uh i told you once you start using then you will realize how bad the user experience is but most users don't really have that technical background to be able to, uh, to understand you know why the user experience is so bad uh you know but it is bad because you know what you have underneath is really bad well they're um, not putting the r&d uh and, and 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 you know when you're putting r&d in an erp the first thing you do is make the gui look nice exactly but there are there is only so much you can do and the with the ui uh if your database is going to be limited you know depends what tools you have too right mm -hmm. i mean when you have an older technology type system you're going to have limited tools to make the screens look better it's the data model that is typically limiting data model is the biggest problem in general uh yeah data model as well as the functionality for example let's say the old a lot of older system they didn't understand what code means okay <laughs> in the traditional one they didn't have to worry about codes they were getting the orders and that's it right so they had just flag called code inside your order so they didn't have a object called code <laughs> but then the crm process has you know evolved over the period of time and then everybody had to so now that data model is still exists in a lot of different legacy system changing that is a nightmare <laughs> you can't change that um some more review uh this is older though i know it's older do you guys want to cover this or do you want, guys have I'm comments sure that what like heck, it's interesting to see what he says but it, you know it's go dave go dave yeah just reading through this i thought this was was interesting um you know, he talks about uh, being a CFO for a vitamin uh, and supplement manufacturer and that previous to that, he was uh, an accounting and software consultant before, uh, which is part of the reason it sounds like they led to, uh, to Process Pro. Um, 
but speaks very highly of it. Uh, doesn't say how large the company is, but sounds like it. Uh, company grew pretty significantly utilizing this uh, utilizing this uh, solution uh, from one to five separate facilities over the course of uh, some amount of time. So this was quite a few years ago, though eleven years. So the only comment I would have here is uh, Dave. If you look at the comment below. So they are saying with the help of a process pro specialist, we recently implemented the automated warehouse system. So I don't know what all they have implemented. Typically what these guys do is they are going to utilize the ERP just as the transactional system. The allocation is happening outside of the ERP. The inventory is happening outside of the ERP. The supply chain is happening. <laughs> and you are not necessarily using the ERP. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that could uh, very well make sense. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to know what's, you know, the automated warehouse system. Is that a WMS system? Like, what is it the system couldn't do without that module or, or bolt-on? I can almost guarantee that, that that is probably going to be the entire order management piece. That is going to be your order or mm. orchestration piece. That is going to be your allocation, the SNOP. The whole thing. That's what ERP is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but does that imply that Process Pro doesn't have all that type of functionality off the shelf? They would have. They didn't use it. Um, so oh, you okay. They have. Oh, okay, not implemented properly. Gotcha. Uh, either implemented or it didn't work for them. They are still happy because they just didn't. Know. <laughs> so they well, paid a lot of money. They were still happy. Stars. Jim gave it five stars. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Jim. Uh, we have some comments, guys. Uh, we can cover those, or if you guys have any comments, we can cover those. Let's take this off, I guess. I mean, I probably we don't need these screens anymore. Uh, Anders, hallelujah, my friend. Uh, <laughs> I love talking about ERP sales methods, and and you know anybody who sat through any of my webinars, you know how I. Here's a joke for the audience. I, uh, what's the difference between a car salesman and an ERP salesman, Dave? <laughs> what's that, Andy? <laughs> a car salesman knows he's lying to you. <laughs> You're saying uh, that the ERP salesperson has been lied to? <laughs> uh, yes. Not The ERP salesperson's only telling, usually, only telling you what they were told to tell you. That's kind of that was my inference, yes. Right. <laughs> I, I, you know, like I, I love Andrew's comment, but I, and and it has been a while since we've talked about this, but you know, I do think that uh, it is a bit of a bait and switch when we, we, you know, like Sam, to your point on uh, on this one in particular, only having, you know, the six screens, uh, six screenshots, no demos. I mean, having all this kind of information, uh, you know, gated. Uh, and, and I believe from the OEM perspective, thinking that's, you know, helpful in the sales cycle, limiting what information is out there. And the, the reality of it is, I think, uh, because we have access to so much information today, um, you know, people are, are at least, I think, and Andy will be the best one to answer this, but asking hopefully more questions uh, and, and use and case the right questions. questions you know, use case questions around what's actually happening with the software uh, versus just kind of blindly accepting, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> like, well, can yeah. you show me how? Yeah. No, no, not yet, but we'll get to that. And, and don't worry, you can do that. <laughs> Here's a trick. Whenever an ERP salesman, when you ask them a question, they go, yeah, that means they don't have a clue. <laughs> if they say yes, that means it's yes. <laughs> Trip yeah, for I, I think one other thing that, you know, kind of popped up in my mind just about the same topic, Nandy and, uh, and Sam, I'd love to get your take on it. But, you know, I think because we talk about, you know, we'll, we'll try to think about these use cases. But I think one of the best places that you could kind of identify within your own current processes are look for the things that you're already manually touching, right? How many yeah. how many times do you have to pull data out of your current system, out of your current processes do something with that, right? That'd be a great place to start from the standpoint of, hey, how does your system, how does your solution handle a case like this um, to try to give people a little bit more, you know, 
ammo to say, hey, here's what I need to here's what I need to uncover, uh, you know, about this particular uh, solution that we're evaluating. Exactly. And typically, you know, from our experience, what we like to do is whenever we are starting any ERP project, we ask them to send every single spreadsheet that they have. Okay, literally everything, because we want yeah. to know what's going on there. And you'll be shocked. 80% of the processes are probably sitting in those spreadsheets. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> I used to use them. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You need to get the job done, man. <laughs> right? Whatever it takes. <laughs> exactly. That's how operations work. <laughs> uh, um, all right, guys, any other comments uh, before we are... Um, well, just before uh, before we did this uh, discussion today, I, I knew someone that had a, a lot of experience with this exact software. And... Uh, Interesting, he said uh, he has a client that got rid of it. Well, it says because they lied to him. That's always always a relative thing because it depends what they were asked and it depends what they heard, right? But uh, they asked if it could do kits and process pro cannot. And what this person meant by kits is uh, they send a customer a half a gallon of something and another four and a half gallons of coating. And they mix it together and spray on bridges to protect the steel. So the two things together, I guess this guy calls that a kit. And apparently nah. Process Pro can't do that, which who knows? Sounds pretty basic, pretty simple. But 60% of the time, I would say the customers are also the problem. They somehow make their mind that, you know, these and are going to be kits. That they, from the ERP, these are not kits. <laughs> hey, attrition, right? I mean, the people that learned the software when you bought it 10 years ago don't work here anymore. Yeah. If you don't keep on getting additional uh, education and training and make sure your people are up to snuff, they're all making assumptions. Yeah. Exactly, guys. Any more comments? Any? No? All right, guys, that's it for today. If you joined for the first time, this was part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys are going to be here next week. We are going to come back with another solution or the vendor. On that note, thanks everyone for tuning in tonight. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for your question man. and your yep, comments thanks, there, Andrew. Great idea.